the subject matter was something very simple. It was about life, the precarity, the precarities of life. And so I wanted a title that just did that, that told you something about opposites. And purple is a great color for discussing those, because of course it's a hybrid. It's the mix of blue and red. It's an in-between state. It's not natural. <laughs> just seemed a, a perfectly simple but resonant metony. One of the things that you have to think about if you're not a scientist or you're not a quote-unquote expert on questions of the ecological is what you do with this subject matter, climate change. And I think uh, the way in which I've tried to approach it is, yes, idiosyncratic because it's about how I see it. It's almost certainly personal because it's about my take on the century that gave birth to me. Um, but it's, it's also a provocation. It's about trying to say to yourself and to a viewer, I don't have to be an expert to speak about, you know, uh, quote unquote scientific things. It felt important to try and bring together questions of climate change, with global inequalities, which have other uh, histories, colonial, and so on. And I don't feel I'm an outsider to any of it. <laughs> I don't feel like, oh, uh, as a black person, I shouldn't speak about climate change. Well, actually, um, that's precisely why I should speak about climate change, in a weird sort of way. There are certainly um, themes drawn from the 20th century. The main one, is, is an autobiographical one, you know, which is you know, my, my life with carbon monoxide. It's a very interesting uh, story because I grew up next to probably the most iconic uh, carbon monoxide manufacturing engine ever, Battersea Power Station. It's a beautiful power station, it's fantastic. And um, it feels right to talk about it now because it's almost gone. But when I was a child, it, it was um, in full flow. I mean, just spewing uh, poison everywhere. On a very, very simple level, I wanted to imagine the life that I have led with millions of other people living in proximity to these icons, um, these death factories. The reality of being a child in West London was that you got a daily dose of carbon monoxide every day from the, the moment you were brought home from your hospital to, to you, you know, that was your life. Nobody ever spoke about it. And I wanted to find a way of devising a narrative in which this was a starting point. It was not by any means the only thing, but it was a good, you know, it, it's always important when you make stuff to remind yourself that whether you're devising a toxic cloud of um, you know empty plastic canisters or you know uh, tires going across part of a wall or a triptych in which you know you try and reference the vanitas tradition or memento mori from the 16th 17th century whatever it is it's important to always um, try and remember that that it's situated in your own kind of imaginings and, and in crucially your own past. If you're invited to, to um, propose a project for the curve, you walk around it and you think, okay, what, <laughs> what can I put in this? Because it is a challenge, it's a huge challenge. The idea of trying to have a multi-screen work came first, a multi-screen work which would have different um, themes or trying to have a conversation then came next. And it's only then that you thought, well, what could those themes be? You know, and of course, you know, something put its hand up and said, I, I, I'm climate change. <laughs> can, can I be in this conversation? <laughs> like, sure, of course you can. Come in. Come and meet race. <laughs> Ethnicity and gender. You know, you want to talk? You know, it, it literally is that. It 
seemed necessary for the project to be both epic and intimate. And it seemed to me that the way in which we were going to get this seamless weave of the two involved having so many bits that when you made it, when you stitched it together, it was a very fine stitch, you know, because there were so many tiny little bits. It was almost like a pointillist, a Syrah painting, you know, because they're tiny and people needed to get really close before they can see, all oh, right, so that's, you know. So that was very much the idea, you know, that someone needed to stand next to a factory in Yorkshire, Swansea, you know, and, and that what they would get is a sense that there were these tiny infinitesimal differences, but the whole itself was compelling. That meant <laughs> having to travel a lot, <laughs> both to different countries and different regions and countries. I, mean, I think we went just about in every direction that one could possibly go in from London. But I don't want people to see that. That's not the point. The point is to see this whole and to be just aware of these fragments informing and infusing and somehow just structuring that whole. You know, it's like, a, as I said, a Syrah painting. You know, it needed to be made of distinct fragments, but the fragments needed to be small enough to not be noticeable in themselves. I don't think artists should feel they have responsibilities and duties, but I do feel that they should know they are uh, responsible, that they are uh, bound by certain conventions, certain you know, protocols. You are implicated by responsibilities. You are called into being by certain duties, which are not... Now, you can disavow those. You can say, I don't want to deal with that. But it doesn't make them disappear. <laughs> just means that you're disavowing them, which is fine. You can do that too. Ha, ha, ha.